Hi everybody, it's Connie Nye with my book Sweetwater Hunt. Thank you. And we are going to do a little demonstration that's related to the book that helps you understand what the book teaches you. Um, before we do a reading from the book and our little demonstration, we're going to do a little bit of, we're going to give you a little bit of background. So my lovely assistant daughter, Sydney, is going to come on out. And we are going to ask Sydney some questions about what she does every day and how she uses water. So Sydney, do you brush your teeth every day? Yeah. Okay. Probably like twice a day, maybe. Yeah, usually twice a day. Okay. So we're going to give you this toothbrush. It's a big toothbrush. And this toothbrush actually represents for us. It's going to help us remember that you brush your teeth every day. And you also wash your hands. So we're going to use a little of this. And you know that you probably use about 12 gallons of water a day just to wash your hands and brush your teeth? Wow, that's a lot. It is a lot, isn't it? All right. Do you drink water? I drink water. Do you I drink, drink a lot, lot of water? water? Okay. And I see you have your water bottle here. My reusable water bottle. We found water. Absolutely. Nice message. Well, you probably only drink about a gallon a day. So 12 gallons to wash your hands and brush your teeth, but only about a gallon to drink. Dang. Yeah. How to step my game up? Yeah. Well. <laughs> All right then. So, do you like to eat? I do. Do, like to do you eat. like to cook? Yeah. Eh, okay. Me too. I prefer to eat more than cook. So what we're going to do is we're going to give you a little outfit. Oh. So that a you can demonstrate for us that we also need water to cook our food and to clean it up. And every day we probably use about six gallons for that. <laughs> How's that? That's just it's quite that's fine. fine. Here, hold this. There we go, Junior Chef. How does that look, audience? <laughs> All right. So, 12 gallons for brushing our teeth and washing our hands, a gallon for drinking, six gallons a day for making our food and wa and cleaning up after we eat it. Um, how about laundry? Do you do your laundry? I do my laundry. Okay. Yeah. Do you, how about how many gallons a week do you think you do? Gallons of laundry? Uh, no, I'm sorry. How many <laughs> loads of laundry a week? I do like a load a week. A load a week. Okay, so let's bring out some laundry for you. All right, and just so we remember that, I'll put a little take your chef hat off. <laughs> so let's on there we go. Okay, so now we remember that we got laundry to do too. So to do a load of laundry is about 42 gallons. Wow. But we're going to approximate that over a period of a week so besides you know so taking into account that seven days worth of laundry it's about six gallons of water a day just to do your laundry and one other question that might be a little oh no maybe let's take this off how about showering do you shower or bathe every day most days okay so we're gonna put that on there I would say that you probably use at least 24 gallons a day just to shower wow yeah, that's a lot. It is a lot. It is a lot. And finally, you also use something else. <laughs> <laughs> Very important that we have water to flush our potties. Do you know the average person uses about 24 to 30 gallons a day just a <gasps> So 30 and 24, 54, 55, 67, 73, 79. We're talking like 80 gallons a day <gasps> just for the daily direct use of water. There are close to 8 billion people in this world. That's a lot of water. That's a lot, but they don't all get that kind of water. We're going to... So we're going to stop with this, but I want us all to remember, if we use 80 gallons of water every single day, each one of us, how come we always have water? It's a really good question, it isn't it? It is a good question. Water goes around and around. It gets recycled. So we have to take care of our water. Ah. All right, we have a round of applause for Sydney here. Thank you. Thank you. And we're going to move into the next part of our program.
So we're going to now delve into the book, Sweetwater Hunt. I'm going to read a little bit of the novel to you. And this is a novel that's going to correlate to an activity that we're going to follow up with. So in this case, it's a snow day, and Wyatt is off with Dr. Flo visiting Dr. Lawless at an elementary school. And so we're going to start with Dr. Lawless talking to Wyatt. Dr. Lawless showed Wyatt the bottle of blue water. If this bottle of colored water represents all the water in the world, how much do you think is potable? Now in our demonstration, we're going to use this as our water, but in the novel, your replication, you turn the water blue and you use a slightly different amount. So if this bottle of colored water represents all the water in the world, how much do you think is potable? Potable? Wyatt asked. Yes, meaning it's fresh and clean enough to drink and use. Wyatt thought about this. He poured out a cupful. Okay, Dr. Lola said, scrutinizing the lesson plan. Let's see if you're right. She poured the cupful back into the bottle and proceeded to measure out various quantities of water representing salt water, polar ice caps, polluted fresh water, and deep groundwater. Only several drops were left over. Of all the water in the world, less than 1% is available to us as fresh water for all of our dealings. That's amazing and alarming. So if you would like to do this activity, which combines math and science and reading, and there's also social science involved, you can go back to the appendix, and here is the limits of water activity that you can replicate yourself. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do the demonstration. So I'm going to ask Sydney to come back out. And we are going to take a look at one of my favorite toys, my Hug-A-Planet. You want to hold on to Hug-A-Planet? Oh, Hug-A-Planet. Yeah. And so what color do you see mostly on Hug-A-Planet? Mostly blue. Mostly blue. What does that represent? Water. Water. So we're going to pretend that this container holds all the water in the world. Okay? So Got this it. is going to represent all the water in the world. So... Right here it says this is five gallons or 640 ounces. I know a lot of math is going on, right? And you're like, ugh. So this is our water. I'm going to ask you to do some things, and then we're going to understand like how much water is available for us to use for all those things we did earlier today. You know, brush your teeth, wash your hands, do your laundry, take a shower, yada, 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 yada. Okay, so I'm going to ask you to pick up the thing that says number one, and there is a line. Yes, good job. There's a line here, and what I'd like you to do is dip it in here and fill this up to that line. Ooh, very nice. Very nice. Okay, so Sydney, stand here. And Sydney just separated all the water in the world into two different kinds. Do you know what two different kinds of water these are? Is it fresh water and salt water? Yeah, do you know which one is which? Salt water. Salt water. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the salt. It's now salt water. Is this something we can use to brush our teeth and Definitely wash our hands and take a shower? No. So we're going to say of all the water in the world, only this is what we get to use. Remember, eight, close to 8 billion of us are using this much of the water. I'm going to use my hands. Okay. Now we're going to go to number Three, because number two was showing us that this was salt water. And what I'd like you to do is come over and fill up this tray. The whole tray? Yep. Now we're going to use our fresh water, and you're going to fill that up all the way, pretty much to the tippy top of each of those little compartments. And we're going to end up putting 14 ounces in there, even though we started with 19 ounces. So we started with 19, and we're going to end up with 14 in here. How much is going to be left in here? Five. Five, very good. So did we get five? Let's oh, see, no. let's see. Perfect, nice job. So this is water that we can't really use. Why not? I want you to pick it up carefully and put it in this container, the whole thing. Just put it in up, right side up, yep, don't dump it. Float it around. Do you know what this tray is? No. 
You don't know what that tray is? Icebergs? Oh, it's, a, it's an ice tray. So oh. yeah, these are icebergs and glaciers. But what's happening with our icebergs and glaciers these days? They're melting. They're melting and crashing. And crashing. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> but at this point, we're just going to say, wow, a lot of that water is locked up and not, we can't use it for what we need it for. All right, so we're going to go to now a little container that says number four. And we want to put two ounces in here. So you're going to fill this up to the two ounce line right up there. You're going to use this. We're using, this is our fresh water that we have. This is all that's left. That's all that's left. Okay. And now you're going to lift that up and see if you can read what's on the bottom without spilling it on yourself. Deep groundwater. Deep groundwater. Some water is so deep in the ground that we can't get to it to use it. Some people, it's, in some places, we use our groundwater to get water to our homes, but some places the groundwater is so deep we can't use it. So we're going to take this and we're going to put this over in the reject pile. We can't use it. All right, so now we're going to go to the container that says number five. And how much are you going to put in there? One ounce. One ounce, and that's the one ounce mark right Thank there. You. Okay, so pour that in there. Oh! I filled too much. Okay, well, you can pour some back. Because, you know, that's all the water we have. Okay. That's okay. Nice. Now, you're going to look at the bottom of that one. What's wrong with that it's water? It's polluted. It's polluted. Oh, no. Oh, no. So we're going to have to put that into the reject pile, too. All right. Now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take what's left over here and pour it into that little cup there. Oh, look at that. Now, lift that cup up. You're going to read how many ounces are in there? Two. Two ounces of what? Available fresh water. So for all the things that 8 billion of us use fresh available water for, like brushing our teeth and washing our hands and taking a shower and washing the car and filling the pool and washing the dog and cleaning off the driveway and cooking our food and flushing the toilet and on and on and on, out of all the water in the world, this is what we have to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the number two and we're going to divide it by 640. And we're going to multiply that times 100 and that's going to give us the percentage of water in the world that is available for us to use as fresh, clean water. What percentage do we come up with? 0. 0.3. <gasps> Less than 1% of all the water in the world is available for all of us to use for all of those purposes. Wow. So this is a great math activity to do that combines science and math and our basic conservation principles because what should we do with this water that we have if this is all we have? Take care of it. Take care of it. All right. Thank you everybody for staying with us through this little activity and a little bit of reading of Sweetwater Hunt for lots more activities and fun reading and a great mystery story, get yourself the book. Everyone buys the book. Thank you.